Hello, Bees Bladers. Welcome back and welcome newcomers to the channel. Look at this. I have a brand new, brand spanking new model from CRKT, Columbia River Knife and Tool, baby. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And by the way, if you want to know more about this knife or any other knives that you see on the channel, every Friday night, Bees Blades live at the hive. Oh, right. Every Friday night, 8.15 to around midnight Eastern time, you can come and hang out with us. You don't have to be a knife expert. No question is too dumb. We're family friendly. We don't talk about politics or religion or anything like that. We don't cuss. Families come to the show every week. We do giveaways. We give away knives, very nice knives, just like the one I'm getting ready to show you. But that's where you can ask questions. And I appreciate when you leave comments. Ooh, look at this. It's even fancy wrapped up. Oh my goodness. But if you leave a comment on the video, I really appreciate it. And we have, we have our chance on Friday nights to do more of the interaction. That's when I answer questions and do size comparisons. And oh my goodness. And all that good stuff. This is a knife that I got to check out at Blade Show 2024. Four, and now we have one to show you all. This is the CRKT Fial. Would you look at it? Just look at it in all of its fialness. And this is by Princeton Wong from Houston, Texas. And I shout out to him. I got to speak to him and he showed me a couple of his knives. I hope to get the other new knife that he just released. There are two versions of the Fial. This one is the more Mr. Fancy Pants. Oh, there you go. Look at that, Wong Design from good old Houston. And the other, there's two versions. You have this titanium version here, and then there is a another one that's in G10 that's a little more molid, um, a little more um, budget model. The other one has 12C27 steel. This one is M390 blade steel. And this one, look at that. You can use this for a little bit of winery. And I'll tell you about the special feature on the inside, that extra tool here in just a second. It does have a nice lanyard spot back there. You could put a big old lanyard on this bad boy. And this would be good for a little bit of charcuterie or bottle opening. Now, are you ready to see this blade? I'm gonna give this one the slow roll it deserves. Oh yes, look at that. Would you look at it? Oh my goodness, is that not a knife of beauty? And obviously you can tell right here, that you've got, you've got a, a bottle opener right up front. You still have a sharpening choil and a bottle opener. I like how they have the satin lines going horizontally up here on the Ricasso and up on the flat and then vertically down here. Look at that beautiful, beautiful blade. And wow, that is pretty much just about a full length swedge that gives it a nice extra pop. Look at that. This is a gorgeous knife. You have some jimping up here. We'll see how that helps with the grippage. Beautiful. Let me get you in here to get you a good look at that. Nice looking pivot collar. Nice looking pivot all together. Beautiful little accents. I love the way it looks. I like the geometry. His, um, his other knife that just came out, it has a ton of geometry if you like sharp lines. And if you look over here, you see this? No screw holes on this side. So... It is absolutely clean and clear. Look, that is fancy. Take take your uh, girlfriend out and you know, do a little uh, wine, little uh, charcuterie. I just like saying the word, kind of like haberdasher. Um, here's a look at your pocket clip. The pocket clip does work well. Now, this, uh, let's see, how do we do, <laughs> how do we do this? Okay, there we go. You open this side up, and this becomes the handle for when you open a bottle of wine. Now, I'm personally not a wine drinker, but Oh, and look at this. I was opening it with my finger down here. It does have a little hidden thumb stud down here to pull out the corkscrew. And then this dude, okay, now are you picturing, here's your wine bottle coming up this way. You screw this down until this, this area right here, see how it has a little divot? This will go on top and then you're able to go and then open it. How about that? So that's how that works. All of you wine connoisseurs and wine drinkers, you already get the gist of how this is going to work. This is going to go like this and it's gonna pull it out. And then, yeah, look at that. Beautiful, and it's smooth. Let's see how, oh yeah, comes out very nicely. Now, the pass-through is adequate. I wouldn't call this necessarily a fidget knife, but there is adequate room and there is a little bit of jimping in there. Deek, 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 deek. A little bit of jimp jimps that do grab the hand very nicely. Now, one thing that I did notice about this knife is that the lock face was not carbonized and it does not have a steel lock bar insert right on the inside. So right here you have titanium coming up right against your M390 blade steel. So that is going to tend to 
if you, especially if you get some lube on the lock face, that's going to give you a little bit of lock stick. It's not hateful. It has a good lockup, but I don't know if you're getting, you can hear this. Did you hear that? Let me do it again. You hear that little bit of click? That is where the metal from this titanium is grabbing onto the M390. Now, it's not uncomfortable. It's not hateful. Um, I, I don't hate it, but it is definitely very grindy to the feel. I'm very surprised that uh, they weren't able to carbonize that or at least put in a lock. I believe the reason they couldn't put a lock bar insert in there was because the, the liner lock was a little too thin. So carbonizing definitely would. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard. So if I had one nitpick, there's only one nitpick I have because the, the ergonomics, the action and everything else are so nice and so exquisite with this knife. The only thing that would have made the difference is that right there, that lock face. Now, look at that. It is drop shutty. Very easy to, to oh my goodness. It's very easy to flip. Over the top flip is very comfortable. And, but that, that grind, that's going to be difficult to, to, to overcome. But if you want a fancy knife to do a little bit of winery and all you're going to be doing is using it to, you know, cut up a little bit of cheese action and cut some stuff open while you're eating it and then close it, that one time click's probably not going to bother you if that's what you're using it for. Now, let me give you a couple quick size comparisons. From tip to tip, this bad boy is 210 millimeters, 8.3 inches long. Closed, it's 117 millimeters, which is 4.6 inches. Your blade is 92.3 millimeters, 3.64 inches long. It weighs in at 3.8 ounces, so it's less than four ounces. Now let me show you what it looks like next to the QSP Penguin, because everybody should have a Penguin, right? And here's another knife that a lot of you are familiar with. This is the good old Vosteed Raccoon. It is longer than the Raccoon. It is a slender knife. It is very fancy, very sleek. I love the way it looks. I love everything about it other than my one nitpick. You know, there's one, I just grabbed it. I wanted to see what it would look like next to. Okay, we're, we're in the general area. This is the new Vostid Psyop. So it's about the same length as the Psyop. And if you got this and shrunk it down and add a little more rounded ergos, that would get you down to the CRKT feel. So it's a beautiful design. I love the way it looks. I would just make that one improvement on the inside. It's very, very smooth. Now, as there's one other thing that I will mention noticing this is that when it comes to detent, um, it has almost no detent whatsoever. So that is something else to, to keep in consideration, to take in mind, that just barely giving it a little shake, my blade is going to come open. Let me, let me show you what it looks like here. So the detent could stand to be a little bit stronger. However, if they did have the detent a little stronger, then you would get a really bad lockup just due to that lack of carbonization. So that's that's just, uh, you know, it's un it's unfortunate. I really do like the knife. I wouldn't call it a deal breaker. It's going to depend on the person and how much you like the knife. I think it's a fantastic design. And I will give a, a mention to Mr. Princeton Wong because he did wish for it to have the carbonization, but for whatever reasons, they weren't able to do it, or maybe it was already in production. That was, I talked, we talked about that. So that is not something that was, that's not a design flaw by any stretch of the imagination. But there you go. The new CRKT Feel. I love it. I'll put links down in the description where you can go check this or the other version out. I'm not sure if the other version is going to feel the same or act the same. I would imagine that you're going to have similar action, but let me know what you think about it. I need your thoughts and opinions, and we'll talk about this more on the live stream on Friday night. Now go watch this video. You'll really enjoy that. And until I see you again in the lives or the chats or the high stream, remember, live life in the present, keep a band-aid handy, and don't cut yourself.